Hey, this is Joe from Home Studio Corner. Today is all about acoustic guitar. By the end of this video, I will give you an action plan for tackling your next acoustic guitar recording session. Because I strongly believe if you can record this well, you can record anything well. But first, before we dive in, actually while you're watching this video, open up a new tab and go to homestudiocorner.com slash checklist. What you'll see is something that looks like this in front of you. This is a free guide that I give out to new subscribers. So it's what they didn't teach me in audio school. In other words, today we're going to talk about how to get great sounding acoustic guitar recordings. But once you know how to do that, the next question is, well, I'm sitting here with my guitar. What do I record? What parts do I record? What rhythms do I record? What, what does the song need? This checklist will help you figure that out. All right, let's dive in. Before I go any further, this is a public service announcement. I tell you this for your own safety. Do not, I repeat, do not record acoustic guitar direct. In other words, don't plug a cable in here and then plug that cable into your interface and record that. It is terrible, 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 terrible. This is a beautiful instrument that someone worked really hard to design and build. It has such rich, harmonics and overtones and all this wonderful stuff that makes it what we love about acoustic guitar. And then if you go and record with the direct, you are ruining everything. The direct is usually, it's just picking up what the bridge hears, which is fine for, I, I play a show live, I get it, I've gotta have it direct. But for recording, always, always, always opt for the microphone. Even if you've got a microphone inside the guitar, that's not gonna sound all that great compared to a decent, even inexpensive microphone picking up this beautiful instrument. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, I feel like I'm posing for like a senior portrait. Um, I did not pose for my senior portraits with a guitar. I folded my arms and leaned against a tree instead. Anyway, uh, the first thing you're gonna wanna do, if you wanna become great at recording this wonderful but frustrating instrument, is to become a bit of a microphone-wielding Jedi. If you can legitimately become a student and a practitioner of great microphone technique, you'll upgrade everything you do in the studio, right? Your vocals will sound better because you're better at choosing the mic and the position for that. If you record drums, if you record other acoustic instruments like cello or piano or hand claps for that matter, it all gets improved if you improve your microphone game. So spend time, it's okay, to quote unquote waste a lot of time figuring out how to place microphones because that is where a lot of the good stuff happens. One way to do it is to think of your microphone as a flashlight. So go grab, if you've got one of those big, my, my dad collects flashlights, go grab one of those big honking like giant stick of a flashlight. What do they typically have? They have like a thing on the end that allows you to, you can twist it and adjust the beam of the microphone. That's essentially like what you have with polar patterns on microphones. So a typical microphone is what we call cardioid. It's directional, it's picking up in one direction. But it's actually, it's usually not a super narrow beam, if you will. It's usually pretty wide. They're called cardioid because if you were to like draw out the shape of how the microphone hears sound, it's kind of in the shape of a heart. It doesn't hear much from the back, so if the heart goes like this, the back of the microphone doesn't hear very much, but the front of the microphone hears a lot, but it still picks up quite a bit from the side. So if you think of a microphone like a flashlight, now this flashlight shines off the side, but like uh, an SM57, for example, shines like a regular flashlight. And if you think of it that way, your microphone will only hear what it can quote unquote see. So if I'm thinking of it like a flashlight, if I put a flashlight really close to my hand, what is it gonna see? It's gonna see that little part right there. It doesn't give me a good idea of what a hand looks like, right? If you've never seen a hand before and I shine a flashlight in a dark room and all you see is this, you're gonna think, all right, there's some weird looking lines but I don't, know, I don't know what I'm looking at, right? That makes me think of an Arrested Development bit that I'm not gonna say, but if, if you know, you know. Um, but if we pull the microphone or the, the, the flashlight back a little bit, the light can shine on more, and we get, we get the fingers and the rings and these weird calluses that I have, uh, and you can get a better picture of like what's happening here. So the same with the guitar. If I put a microphone, you know, right here, you know, where it's literally 
an inch away from the guitar, that mi- there, there's a couple problems with that, but the main one is that microphone will only see that little bit of the guitar. This is a pretty complex instrument. There's a lot going on here, and sometimes it takes a little space to let that sound develop. So if I put the microphone inches, you know, half an inch away from the guitar string, I'm getting the sound of that right there, which might be okay, probably won't be, and I'm not really getting the entire instrument. Now, the other side of it, though, if I put the microphone across the room, right, four or five feet away from the guitar, it's probably going to see too much, right? It's going to hear the guitar, but it's also going to hear the sound of the entire room. Same with a flashlight. If I back away from you and you're sitting six feet away from me and I shine a flashlight on you, I'm going to see you, but I'm going to see the chair, I'm going to see the wall behind you, I'm going to see the floor, I'm going to see all sorts of things. The microphone's the same way. So we want to find that happy medium where we're close enough to mostly just hear guitar, we're not so close that we don't hear the entire instrument, and we're not so far away that we're hearing everything in the room. The other piece is something called proximity effect. If we get really close, not only do we have the problems I just described, but typical cardioid microphones pick up more low frequencies the closer you get to the mic, which is why if I want to do a movie voiceover, I get really close to the microphone in a world gone mad. So that can be great if I want to do that, but if I'm wanting to record acoustic guitar, I don't want that much low end. So if you're placing your microphones really close to the guitar and you find yourself constantly battling boomy sounding guitars, there's your answer. The microphone, not only is it a flashlight, but it's kind of an EQ. I can adjust the low frequencies of my recording just by how close or far away I get the microphone to the source. So keep those two things in mind as you practice your microphone skills and you'll realize, holy smokes, there's a lot that I can affect by where I place the microphone, where I position it, the distance and also the angle and what it's looking at. You could spend an entire week eight hour days recording acoustic guitar with one guitar and one mic and discover all kinds of things because there's so much nuance to this instrument and the way microphones work, it would be time well spent. Your next question might be, all right, Joe, so that's all well and good, but can you give me like a good starting point? Yes, I can. So every guitar is different. This is a Gibson J45. It sounds very different from that Uh, Taylor 314 up there or that other, I don't know if you can see it, there's another Fender guitar on the wall. They're very different sounding instruments. So your starting point is really just that. It's kind of an educated guess as to where it might sound good, but you're going to need to make some adjustments from there. More on that in a minute. But for me, the starting point is typically somewhere around right here. So where the neck of the guitar meets the body. That's usually on the 12th to 14th fret or so. It's on the it's exactly the 14th fret here. So that's kind of my aiming point where I've got the microphone pointed. And so typically I just start here and I back off maybe maybe 8 inches away. So about 6 to 8 inches away from the guitar, pointed at around the 12th fret or maybe here where the body of the guitar meets the neck. And that's a good starting point. Why is that? Well, part of it's just that's just what's worked for me over the years. But bigger picture, it's you get the the, the body of the guitar. You know, the sound is emanating off of the top of the guitar. Some of the sound is coming out of the sound hole. But some of the sound is up here, right, where my fingers are doing all that. We want to hear some of that as well. So this is kind of a nice, happy medium between the two. We get some of this stuff. We get the sound of the pick hitting the strings. We get a little bit of the warmth coming out of the sound hole, and then we get the general tone of the guitar coming off the top. Now, from there, this is this is important if you want to write this down on a little sticky note. There's a little three-part cycle that I teach where you record something, then you put the instrument down, mute the microphone, listen back to what you recorded, decide if it's good or bad, right, good or bad, and then if it's not good yet, then adjust something with the microphone or anything else, and then repeat the process. So it's record listen, adjust, record, listen, adjust. You don't have to know where to put the microphone at first. It's all just an educated guess, even for the most, the proest of pros is going to put the microphone where they think it's going to work. And they might guess right on the first try, but they're going to do the same thing. They're going to listen to something, record, listen back to the recording and say, "Mm, nope, that's not it. And they'll go change something. For our purposes, I would recommend just changing where the microphone is placed. Is it too boomy? Back it up. Is it too weird sounding? Is it too, you know, is it getting too much body and not enough something else? Just try different angles. For this specific guitar, my first time I recorded it, I did it like that. I had it straight on like this and it sounded okay. And I didn't find the right position until I adjusted it to something like this, 
where the microphone was closer to like the seventh fret where my hand is, but it was pointed down here towards that same spot. And that angle, for whatever reason, picked up all the goodness that made this guitar one of my favorite guitars of all time. My spirit animal guitar? My wooden animal? No. Uh, anyway, the, the, it, the, when I recorded it like this, it didn't really sound like this guitar, but when I recorded it like this, it did. And that's unique to this guitar. I haven't found another guitar where that's true. That Taylor, it likes just the straight-on approach. And every other guitar I've recorded has a slightly different spot where it wants to be recorded. So start here, and then just record, listen, adjust until you find the right spot. Now, it, to be, to be, it needs to be said that you need to pick the right guitar in the beginning, and the guitar itself, of course, matters. If it's a cheap plastic guitar that can't stay in tune, there's no amount of mic technique that's going to fix that, right? It, that needs to be said because for some reason I still get people sending me stuff to critique where they're asking about the guitar tone, but the first thing I hear is the guitar is out of tune. So who cares what the tone is? It doesn't sound good because the guitar is out of tune. So tune your guitars. I spent literally 12 minutes tuning this guitar before shooting this video, and I played like two notes. But it's in tune because I literally spent a really long time. Part of it was because there were kids up here the other day, and they all like to turn all of these. It infuriates me, but it's okay. Uh, so this was way out of tune before. But 12 minutes to tune a guitar... It can be annoying if I'm if people are in the session waiting for me to tune, but it's worth it because everyone wants an in-tune guitar. No one wants me to be quicker, but only have my guitar be out of tune because we can't really fix that later. The final piece of this puzzle, what about the microphone itself? What about really nice, expensive microphones? I love expensive microphones. They are not the deciding factor in whether my guitar recordings sound good. Here's how I can prove that to you. This microphone right here, this is a Personas PX1 microphone. I think it sells for around 130 bucks. That's about as inexpensive as microphones get. And yet, I get people every week on YouTube, you can probably find a comment on one of my recent YouTube videos where they'll say, hey, what microphone is that? I love the way it sounds on your voice. But guess what? I've had those comments for the last, what, 14 years of running Home Studio Corner, and I haven't used this microphone exclusively. I've used more expensive microphones. I've had five $700 microphones in this slot, $300 microphones, $500 microphones, and I get the same question regardless. Now, why is that? Let's think about it. Does that mean that better microphones don't matter? Not necessarily. It just means if you can't get a good sound with a you know, run-of-the-mill, everyday microphone, then getting a nicer microphone that is a multiple of the price of the cheap one that you have is probably not going to make much, if any, difference. If you can't get great sounds using regular old equipment like this microphone, the problem isn't the microphone. It's you or it's the guitar or it's some combination of those. Back to this. The reason, this sounds arrogant, but it's true. Um, the reason people like the sound of this microphone on my voice is really because they just like the sound of my voice. I didn't do anything to make this voice happen. This is just the way I came out of the womb sounding like this. No, not really, that would be so creepy. But I grew into this voice. My dad has this deep, booming bass voice, and I have a little bit higher version of that. The microphone has nothing to do with that, right? So if that's true, then yeah, I, I love a $4,000 microphone. They can be really cool, but I'm going to sound like me regardless, so we got to make sure we're placing whatever microphone we have in the right position. With voice, it's a little easier because there's typically, it's not like my mouth is massive and there's all these different places I can place a microphone. It's pretty simple. With a guitar, it's another, it's a completely different animal because there's so many possible placements that we can choose. But the microphone choice isn't as important. If you have a condenser microphone that picks up in a direction, it's a directional mic, a cardioid mic, you should be able to get a great recording. If you can't, it's probably not the mic, it's probably not the gear, it's either the guitar, or it's your playing, or your skill level, and those things can be improved. Okay, that last part was a little harsh, but sometimes you need a little harsh reality uh, if you wanna improve, right? I am running this home studio corner business since 2009. There are harsh realities that I have to face. I have to look at the numbers and say, oh, that didn't work and that did. I don't like it because it hurts my feelings a little bit, but it's good and it makes me better, it makes this better, it creates more value for you and on and on and on. So here's what I would recommend for you. Book yourself a session 
with a single microphone and a guitar and give yourself as much time as you want to just experiment on microphone placement. So play the same, the same part, you know, you know, eight bars of something and record it in all different positions, all different arrangements, all different ways and compare them. And you will learn so much through this. It is time well spent. Even if nothing you record becomes like a project that you actually finish and release to the world, this is good work. This is good practice, good reps to get in. And then repeat that process with a different guitar or maybe a different style of playing, right? Because my placement for finger style guitar is pretty different than my placement from when I'm wailing away on the guitar or when I'm using my thin little jazz three picks or if I get a really thin nylon pick, that's going to make a difference as well as to how I place the microphone. So give yourself some repetitions, both with lots of mic positions, but also different styles of playing because you're going to find there are certain certain combinations that work really, really well. It's not, no one expects you to know that just off the top of your head or from watching a video like this. The only way you really know that is by doing it, hearing it, and then it solidifies in your brain. And then next time you have a recording session with an acoustic guitar, you know, you have a lot more confidence as to what to try, where to start, and then how to adjust from there to get the sound that you want. All right, that is it for me. If you haven't checked out your free checklist, this is a great thing to just print out that gives you some ideas of what parts to play once you've nailed the recording part. Well, now you got to be a producer, right? Okay, it sounds good, but what part do I record? This checklist will help you with that. Go to homestudiocorner.com slash checklist for your free copy. All right, thanks for watching. Happy recording.